Welcome. Hi, I'm Ida Rays, and I'm a certified divorce lending professional. And this interview is part of the Divorce Literacy Series from the Divorce Lending Association. And we're basically putting this series together, looking for um, the spotlight family law professionals to give insight to people that are going through divorce or related life events. And today I have with me Karen Amos and I'm so excited about that. Karen, would you kindly introduce yourself to our audience and tell us about what you do? Sure. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I am an attorney in Howard County, Maryland, and I have been practicing family law for 33 years now. So everything from agreements to contested litigation is is what I do. Great. And... um and what do you have a particular specialty or something you really prefer to do? Um, I prefer to do when people can reach an agreement. That's my preference. Uh -huh. um, no specialty, really. But the longer that I have done this, the more I realize if people can keep themselves out of court and everybody be reasonable and have a good team, that that's the best way any case can go for everyone. Okay. When you say a team, is that is um, are you referring to a special process there, or you, when you what do you mean by the word team? When you in, well, sometimes a team can just be you know two lawyers and the two clients. Um, sometimes a client may need a therapist. Sometimes both of them need a therapist. Maybe a CPA that's involved in helping. It may be a mortgage broker that we need help with. So. If we surround ourselves with people who bring skills, the professional skills that we need to get a resolution, um, that's the best way to get through any case. And you're going to end up with a better result than you will uh, with a cookie cutter approach from a court. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, those all those disciplines seem to appear uh, in every case. Right. I mean, there's there's all those issues that appear the real the real the real property, you know. The finances, right, and um, usually coaching or some sort of health professional. Um, if you and so when you when you think of a team, do you have any suggestions there? Or do you usually recommend somebody, or do you? How do you handle that concept with a client? Um, it depends. Sometimes um, my client may come to me, and he or she already has a therapist. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes the children already have a therapist, so we don't need to, to worry about that. Um, sometimes they have a CPA mm -hmm. and depending upon the case, let's say the parties have had a CPA for the last 10 years during the marriage, and maybe the CPA is close with one of the parties and not the other. And, you know, so then we decide, look, we need to have, you know, two different people involved in this. So it's sort of sitting down and figuring out, okay, it's. I can only do so much. I only know so much as an attorney. I don't know the mortgage side and lending and the best to refinance, those types of things. So, you know, let's see, is that even going to be an issue? If so, let's, you know, bring other people in. At least let's make contact in the beginning so we know that we have those resources available. Excellent. Yeah. Now, if you were um, giving advice to somebody about to start this or, you know, thinking I need to get some information, what would be your what, what would be a, a, some advice that you would give them to, when they're starting like that? I think the first thing I would say is consult with a good family law attorney. Everybody has a divorce story. You will hear neighbors and relatives and cases are so specific. Each state is different. You may hear a little snippet. I mean, I have people that come to me and say, I'm told X, Y, Z, or I read this on the internet. You know, my number one thing would be, don't do that. Go and talk to someone. Um, you may have been with your spouse for a long time. It may be amicable don't have, don't just listen to your spouse and think that that's what the law is. It's an yeah. adversarial process. Even if it's amicable, mm. you, are, you have competing interests and, you know, the internet only has so much mm. available and, you know, a little bit of knowledge sometimes can be dangerous. So go see a divorce attorney. It's a big step to get yourself in the door. I know, but sit down if you're contemplating even and spend an hour just coming up get some basic information 
So you can have that. And then the other thing I would say is just know that it's maybe a tough process. Everybody gets through it. Um, you take it day by day. You can't think mm-hmm. what's going to happen a year from now or two, you know, people that aren't in a divorce, we still, we generally don't think long-term it can be overwhelming. So take it day by day. Um, you'll get through it. That's great. Great advice there. Um, if you wanted to, if you know, when you're thinking back, cause you've got so many years of experience, what would be one of your most memorable cases and why would it be memorable? And also, um, you know, we, how were you able to make a difference for that client? Um, I think over the last 33 years, my most memorable was a case that was just a few years ago and it was a relocation case. Mm-hmm. Custody cases are, this was a divorce case, but it involved custody of three children. Tough case when someone wants to relocate. And mm-hmm. I had a mom um, who had always been stay at home, who homeschooled her children and um, wanted to relocate back to Kansas City where her family was. And mm-hmm. so that's a, a tough thing to do when the kids have some ties here. And um, she was a wonderful person. We had a, a um, best interest attorney involved. There was a psychological evaluation of the parties. And at the end of the day, um, after a hearing of several days, the court allowed her to relocate. Um, you know, some, sometimes we win cases that we should lose and we lose cases we should win. This was a great result and a great result for the family. Um, I stay in touch with her. Things are going great. And so those types of cases, well, they're probably the most stressful and be the most rewarding when you know that you've made a difference in somebody's life like that. Yeah. Now, do you, um, would you say, cause I think most people listening to this might not know that court is one option would you say you that is a very large part of your practice or do you or how would you divide up your practice with different styles of divorce different processes my style after all these years is really if i have someone come to see me is to say look let's educate you first and then any court in the state of maryland if you file for divorce they're going to order you to go to mediation Let's try not to be adversarial to start things. Let's see if we can get a dialogue going, if we can go to mediation. I very much believe if you can stay out of a courtroom, then that's what you should do, particularly issues like custody, you know, to have a judge decide, um, you know, someone who's never met your children. Sometimes they have to be tried, like the case I just mentioned. But, yes. um, you know, if you can sit down with your spouse and a mediator and perhaps counsel with you and try to come up with what's best for your children, what's best for, you know, when should we sell the house and all of those issues, that's the best thing. So I like to start out that way. Mm-hmm. If we can stay out of court, that's my motto. There are cases that, you know, there may be inaction on the other side. And so you fall yeah. complaint for divorce. That may end up in mediation. Um, I mean, I would say probably 70% of my cases never make it to a final divorce trial. We may have had hearings and some litigation, but we end up being able to resolve it ultimately so that a judge doesn't have to do so. That's and sometimes right. it takes people going through the process to say, wait a minute, just telling my story didn't get me everything I thought <laughs> Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so that that's always the goal, particularly yes. children, because these people will see one another, hopefully in graduations and weddings and all kinds of things in the future. And, you know, we want them to be able to co-parent when this is all over. Absolutely. Well, listen, I can't thank you enough for sharing your variable time with me today. Um, if someone is watching this and they would like to get in touch with you, um, probably the easiest thing would be to have a web address where they can get all your contact information. What is your website? My website is uh, apmdlaw.com. It's Amos okay. Perrick Law. Perfect. And that Perfect. will take you to my website and all my contact information. Yes. And the, the great write up on you. <laughs> She's got a lot of accomplishments. Thank you. Thank All right. You. Well, listen, thank you so much today. We'll, we'll, um, I'm sure we'll be talking soon. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Take care. Thank you, Ida.